Hi, my name is Rich Niebaum, and I'm here to talk about helping Algebra 1 students develop and master their pre-algebra skills. I teach students attending Taft High School and also students in the gifted program at the Taft Academic Center, which is also part of Chicago Public Schools. Over the last few years, my colleagues and I have noticed that students have been entering their Algebra 1 class really lacking in many of the pre-algebra skills that we consider essential for mastering the Algebra 1 content. One common approach for addressing those deficiencies is to simply weave pre-algebra content into the course curriculum. And that's something my colleagues routinely do, and I have done as well. Because my eighth graders can earn an honors level high school credit uh, for taking their Algebra I class with me, they're very highly motivated to pass this comprehensive Algebra exit exam that they have to take at the end of the school year. And there's a lot of material on that test, and I don't really have time to focus on pre-algebra skills with those students. So I'm here to talk about an approach that I've developed to, I believe, more efficiently address those pre-algebra skills deficiencies, and I'd like to show you how I'm doing it, all using free, openly available tools and technologies such as Khan Academy and several of the tools connected with Google Classroom. Now, <clears throat> if you're not already using Google Classroom and Khan Academy, uh, I hope to give you a reason to start. At the same time, since I'm not going to be providing tutorials on the basics of those platforms, uh, I have provided links to some of the helpful resources uh, in the slides associated with this presentation. What I will be focusing on and showing you is how I have brought these technologies together into what I think of as really a comprehensive pre-algebra skills development system, all of which honestly requires relatively little effort on my part to achieve and document fairly impressive growth and learning uh, on the part of my students. So before we dive into the technicalities, um, let's take a look at where it all comes together in my pre-algebra mastery tracker. Okay, so now we're looking at my mastery tracker, my pre-algebra mastery tracker. This version has been uh, somewhat anonymized because we are looking at actual live student data. Now, this progress is at five weeks into the course, and I did not start this on week one. This was probably about the middle of week two that I started uh, building this and rolling this out. So up to this point, I've assigned and asked students to complete, I believe, up through about column H, which is uh, measurement. You probably have already noticed that the spreadsheet is color-coded and the green represents 75% and up. So I felt that that 75% uh, correct would be considered mastery level, even though obviously we we're hoping for 90 or 100%. But for the purposes of seeing a comprehensive view of relatively how students are doing. I set that threshold. So the yellow is from 50% to just under 75%. And below 50%, uh, including obviously 0%, is considered uh, red or failing. Now, one of the reasons that I really like this spreadsheet is I can uh, look at the student represented on line six and say this is a person who either hasn't started or isn't properly tracking their work or hasn't properly shared their spreadsheet with me. 
And so I can ch uh, chase that student down and ask what's going on or email or if need be, talk to the parents. With the students who are making progress, I can just leave them alone and watch. You can see that some students, like the student on line four, uh, has completed the entire unit. So I'd like to interject here that I have some data from three weeks beyond when I was last speaking in the video. And for a continuity, I'm showing the same time that was just being talked about, uh, except zoomed out so you can see more students. You can see quite a lot of red. This is three weeks into the process. So <clears throat> after a week from that point, I have a little bit of cleanup, but at this point I actually took students out in the hall and said, hey, this is something that I really care about and I'd like you doing this work and you know, what's in the way? And some students were telling me that they actually had been doing the work but not updating their spreadsheets, so I helped them overcome some technical obstacles. And in some cases, they weren't really working on it, and so I encouraged them, to let them know how important it is. And just four days later, uh, there was a significant jump in progress. Now, a little more than a week after this would be the the due date for all the different assignments. So uh, that last week, uh, I was very enthusiastic. And within that week, look at what happened. Huge jump. Then with only a couple of days left, I was able to encourage a few more students to, to fill in some missing pieces. And by the end of six weeks, we were at a significant level of achievement. I want to zoom in here on a number at the bottom of this screen. So I'm going to zoom up. This number at the bottom, this total average in the first column of 75% means that essentially the overall achievement level of all the students in all my classes was that they mastered 75% of what I had asked them to. Now, obviously, I would hope for 100% being a perfectionist, but uh, as an a ambitious realist, my private goal was actually 80%, and I feel that with a little bit of additional encouragement, I can allow students to complete some of this work late and get that easily over 80%, if not higher. So if you're interested in finding out how I accomplished this, I encourage you to check out part two of the video.